guys, welcome back to the channel Daughter of Increase or the Daughter of Increase Facebook group. My name is Nay Denise for those of you who are new to the channel and I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday all about my faith, God, Christ and expanding the kingdom of God. Tonight I am back again to finish up John chapter 3 so this is going to be part 2, I mean sorry not part 2, part 3 where I focus on the last half of the chapter which are basically verses 22 to 36 and yeah once we're done with this we can finally dive into chapter 4 for those of you who have not seen the last two videos um, basically Wi-Fi issues Wi-Fi is down um, having trouble using my hotspot at home so I need to go to the library but because I have my son I don't get to go to the library as often as I would like to go so by the time you are seeing this um, parts 1 and 2 should already be up as well prior to this one and I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to do another live video again just with the Wi-Fi and everything so in the time being I will be pre-recording these sessions and hopefully really soon I'll be able to get back into my live sessions but um, printable notes for this are already up I uploaded them previously in the group but then I deleted it and re-uploaded it because I had to edit some stuff out um, so yeah you can get the new updated notes either in the Facebook group and if you don't have Facebook check down below in the description section and um, you'll find a link to the daughter up in increase Google Drive docs where I have um, all of the Bible study notes from Ruth Esther and now John for you guys to print out so everything that I am saying most of what I am saying is coming from those notes that I already had typed out so you can check those out and also included in the notes are um, like little questions just to help you guys really interact with the text on your own um, is that it that's pretty much it so I have my ESV journaling Bible let me just grab the sleeve for you guys so here it is, the ESV single column journaling Bible in black. It is from Crossway. That's the text that I use when I do these online Bible studies. Um, personally, I love the New King James translation, but when I am teaching, um, I don't want to say teaching, but when I am leading Bible studies and doing scripture on the internet, I prefer to use an easier translation. So the ESV is like the main one for when I'm doing Bible studies. When I do my personal like study with me videos, it's going to be with the New King James translation. Um, I have my cell phone here with U version so that I can get to the cross references as quick as possible without flipping through the actual Bible. Um, and as usual, it's late, um, so you're going to hear the, I believe that's the generator outside my window, um, because we actually have the air on in my house, so the generator is running outside, so I apologize if you hear that. Hopefully there are no firecrackers tonight, as there were last night, but um, I have my Sharpie pen and my Micron 01 pen that I use to write. I use a Sharpie pen to write on my post-its, the Micron to write in the Bible, and I'm, I'm enjoying this pen a lot, um, so I have that. And tonight I'm going to be sticking to highlighters. So I have my Zebra Mild Liners, which come in a bold and a fine tip, so it's double-ended. And then I have the Sharpie Smeragard highlighters that I get from like my local Rite Aid for like two bucks. Post-it note is still going to be the cloud that I got from Dollar Tree that says never stop looking up. Um, so we used one here. And then I have this one from part 2's definition, so I'm going to continue writing on this one to finish up definitions if I need to. So let me actually put this back here. But um, yeah, we're going to dive into the last part, which is really focusing on John the Baptist's final testimony, if you will, of Jesus before we basically hear nothing more of him. So I'm going to do a quick prayer to get us ready and then I'm going to dive straight into this is not a super long video. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight just giving you praise, glory, and honor. We thank you for allowing us to just be able to study your word and meditate on it, God. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for your everlasting love, for your grace, for your mercy, for just loving us even though we sin, Father God. We thank you for the time in which we can dive into the Gospel of John and really dissect it to understand what you wanted us to understand at the time that this was written, God. 
I ask that this word touches each and every soul that is watching this video. And I'm asking that you use me to just lead this Bible study and allow other people to learn and really get what it is that you need for them to get for themselves. Amen. So I am getting a little bit better with my prayers. Um, praying out loud is still something that I find nerve-wracking. But um, I have in the past written out my prayers and then said them. Um, but I'm learning to now just pray off the top of my head <laughs> as best as I can. Okay, so the generator just went off. So that means the air in the house went off. So that's good. Hopefully that stays like that. So if you guys don't know my method, the method that I use is basically kind of like a five-step method. But um, you're really doing the steps at the same time. So the first thing that I do is I first read through the text, um, either paragraph by paragraph, complete sections, complete book. It depends on like how long it is. So in this case, I would probably just read it completely through because it's really not a lot of paragraphs. So I'll probably just read it completely through one time. The second time I will go through and circle words that I wanted to define. And this is these are basically words that I do know and words that I don't know. The reason being is because I will look them up in their Greek language. Since the um, New Testament was written in Greek, the original language is Greek. So I would look them up in the Greek definition. And then once I circle and define, I would then go in a third time as I read and underline key parts of key verses. And then the fourth part of that would be to take my notes as I'm underlining in the third step. And the final step is to add color because color just makes everything so much better. Like, do you guys see this color? Just color everywhere. I love color. And it just helps me to keep track of where all my notes are. So, let's dive in and read. So, I'm just going to read completely through and oh, I did paint my nails <laughs> earlier today um, because I told you guys if you are in the Facebook group that I've really been just feeling down and out and just I feel like depression is creeping back in so I decided to finally do a mani and pedi I haven't done my nails in a very long time you guys have seen my videos they have been bare and I used to be up on doing my nails myself whether it be acrylics or just a simple manicure and pedicure slacked off so I figured this would be a start for me to um you know get back in the right direction if you will sort of like self care so yeah painting my nails it's a little bit messy right now it is what it is it's whatever but um this is bubble bath from OPI and this is uh I don't even know let me show you guys okay Sorry to the males who are watching this video, um, but quickly, so this kind of nude color I'm wearing is from OPI, and it's in bubble bath. I'm not sure if you can see that. Let's see. Okay, hopefully you can see that now. Yeah, so it's in the color bubble bath. This is three coats. You could probably get away with four, just because it is a very sheer color, but I do like the, um the neutral tone of it and then on the accent nail which is my ring finger which I always do my ring finger a different color and I also have this on my toes it's from Orly and um, I think this color is called Sandcastle I got this from Marshalls <laughs> for four bucks um, the, the name is not at the bottom but if I'm not mistaken when I looked it up online it was called Sandcastle it's just a really really pretty color and um, this bubble bath I picked up at my local Rite Aid. My local Rite Aid sells OPI and um, SE and China Glaze polishes. They're a little bit pricey, but um, I did get this when they were having a sale, so bubble bath. Okay. And over top, I just have a kind of like gel top coat to give it that shine. But moving on, <laughs> reading completely through. Starting at verse 22, this is entitled, John the Baptist it, John the Baptist exalts Christ. This, like I said, in a sense, is kind of like his last final testimony before his ministry dies out. So jumping in, starting with verse 22. After this, Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean countryside, and he remained there with them and was baptizing. I'm not sure if you guys can see this. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Okay. Baptizing. John also was baptizing at Anon near Salim, 
because water was plentiful there, and people were coming and being baptized, for John had not yet been put in prison. Verse 25. Now a discussion arose between some of John's disciples and a, few, and a Jew over purification. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who was with you across the Jordan to whom you bore witness, look, he is baptizing and all are going to him. John answered, A person cannot receive any one thing unless it is given him from heaven. Verse 28. You yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but I have sent I'm sorry, but I have been sent before him. The one who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is now complete. Verse 30. And this is like my key verse for daughter of increase. He must increase, but I must decrease. Verse 31. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth belongs to the earth and speaks in earthly way. He who has come from heaven is above all. He bears witness to what he has seen and heard, yet no one receives his testimony. Verse 33. Whoever receives his testimony sets his seal to this, that God is true. For he, whom, for he whom God has sent utters the words of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. Verse 36. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him so i just read that completely through and now i'm going to circle the words that i want to define so i'm going to use the pigma micron zero one archival ink pen this is a point 24 25 millimeter pen and the first word i'm going to circle the first two are actually in verse 23 and those are Ana and Selen. Then going to verse 29, I have bridegroom. Going down to verse 30, I have increase and decrease. And like I said, these are words I do know, obviously, but I do want it to, I wanted to define them and get like the biblical Greek definition of them. Um, moving to verse 36, we have obey. And wrath. So, the first one is Anon, then we have Salim, bridegroom, increase, decrease, obey, and wrath. So now that we have that done, I'm going to start putting definitions and I'm just going to use the same post-it from part two where I was writing down the words since I have some space. So starting off with Anon. And actually I want to learn how to pronounce these words properly. So I'm going to go on my phone. On my phone, I'm going to hit the Blue Letter Bible app because I love Blue Letter Bible app for getting pronunciations of the word. Um, okay, it opens up to the last scripture I was at, which was in Isaiah, because I did some verse mapping. So, New Testament, John 3, and I said 23. So, we're going to click on John, we're in John 3. Verse 23, we're going to click 23, and you're going to hit on interlinear, and it's going to give you basically word for word breakdown. So it gives you the English word, the Strong's um, Greek concordance, so it has the G for Greek, and then if it's Hebrew, it has H. Um, root transliterated, and as well as this like microphone here. Let me um, quickly turn off my Bluetooth. And I apologize if you hear my son, it is late, he is sleeping. As you can see, it's 1226, he's asleep. Trying to be as quiet as possible. So, um, okay, so here is the word Anon. So I'm going to click it. Strong's G137, I known. I known. So I was saying it wrong, it's not even Anon, it's I known. And then also for the next place, which I'm going to assume is Selene, but it's probably wrong. Strong's G, 4530. 
Salim. Salim. So it's I known and Salim are the words. So I known and it's basically I can show you guys here hitting the G one thirty seven. It means springs and it's a place um near at which John baptized. Uh it's a place in Palestine. Right here. Strong's definition, Hebrew origin, um, which is like place of springs, but it's a place in Palestine. Hopefully you guys can see that. And you can further go down and get more information on it, of course. So on my notes, I don't have a place in Palestine. I just put a place in the Jordan Valley because that's basically what it is. So you can put either way. A place in the Jordan Valley. In Palestine, I'm gonna put it means place of springs, and that's something I didn't have written down in my notes. So I'm just gonna go back and hit the G4530 for Salim. Gonna write that out. Um, it means peace, but it's also a place in Palestine. So, place in Palestine. Means peace. So we have the first two. So I'm going to put that to the side and write the rest of my definitions down on this one. So, bridegroom. And starting in chapter 4, when I um, do these, I will have my definitions already written down because I notice that definitions take a little bit longer. So I'm probably going to speed this part up and then come back to you guys. So the Greek word is. Phyus? Phyus? I don't even know. And it's a man on his wedding day. Just before and after wedding. So that's what a bridegroom is. The next one I had was increase. Greek word is, I can't even pronounce that, sorry. Greek word is A U X means to become greater. To grow or enlarge decrease Greek word can't pronounce that one either a lack a lie it's two T's and two O's but one of the O's has an accent over top, so that's not an H, that's E L A T T O O. Um, means to make less, lower, or inferior, and that's definitely where um, Daughter of Increase came from. Obviously, this was a guy speaking John the Baptist, but I just felt like. Um, we as people, um, we as women need to 
really decrease of ourselves so that Jesus can really increase in our lives so that we can become more like him. So that's where I got uh, the whole Daughter of Increase name from that. Um, the next two are Obey. Which I just looked up the English and it's to comply with command. Direction or request submit to the authority of and to listen to and then wrath. Greek word it looks like ogre to me, but <laughs> meaning impulse anger violent passion which is like a really dangerous type of passion like when your passion is violent that's a little creepy punishment or vengeance alrighty again all these definitions are on the principle so you have that because I'm terrible at pronouncing these Greek words um, so now let's just give it some lively color so I'm gonna start off with a sharpie Let's use yellow for that word there that I can't pronounce. I'm about to close it up. Didn't even mark up what I needed to mark up. Whoopsie. Obey in pink. And let's take this brown. This is a zebra mild liner. It's a bold and a fine. So it has your regular kind of like chisel tip. And then a more fine point tip. They bleed, um, but not extensively. Obviously, when you keep it at a certain point too long, that part will bleed through. But I don't really have much uh, problems with those. So all of my definitions are now done. I'm going to take this and stick it on the back of this paper over here. Alright. So now that we have definitions down and ready to go oopsie sorry I'm gonna now put my sharpie away because I don't need it anymore if you guys hear any noise I have my feet on top of my printer right now so I apologize <laughs> so now let's dive in to our actual notes let me just scroll back down to where I need to be and I don't have notes for the first two verses Four verses. Yeah, I don't have notes for this part here, but again it says after this, Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean countryside and he remained there with them and was baptizing. John also was baptizing at Anna near Selene. Sorry, still pronouncing it wrong, whatever, uh, because water was plentiful there and people were coming and being baptized for John had not yet been put in prison. I don't really have any notes for that. If you guys had any like profound notes um let me know because when i looked in my study bibles when i was personally reading through it i didn't really get much out of it 
Um, maybe verse 24 you could probably underline and like find out when he went to prison and write that. But I just didn't find that it was important to me personally. <laughs> but um, now a discussion arose between some of John's disciples and a Jew over purification. Fix my glasses quickly. And now I have stuff for verse 26. So, and they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who was with you across the Jordan, to whom you bore witness. So I'm going to underline that. Look, he is baptizing and all are going to him. I'm going to underline he is baptizing and all are going to him. Just those first two parts there. And um, basically when they first start off with Rabbi, he who was with you across the Jordan to whom you bore witness. This is the beginning of John the Baptist's ministry ending and him leaving, um, not leaving, but having completed his ministry, his purpose. As we know, um, back in Luke, but um, in the beginning, in John, um, John 1 and 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. So John chapter 1 verses 6 through 8 basically tells you the purpose of John the Baptist's ministry. To bear witness to the light, to bring people into repentance. This is now the beginning of his purpose being fulfilled and his ministry beginning to fade. So... The beginning of John the Baptist's ministry fading. And completion of purpose. And I guess the cross reference will be John 1 6 through 8, which talks about like what his purpose was. If you really want to read more about John, read the first chapter of Luke. I think it's the first and second, but I'm going to say the first chapter. Um, and I'm referencing to John the Baptist, not John the Apostle. <laughs> it can get confusing, I know. Okay. So he is baptizing. And all are going to him. So at this point, the disciples of John the Baptist learned that Jesus was baptizing and he was drawing a very large crowd. So therefore, if Jesus is now drawing a large crowd, that obviously means that John the Baptist is no longer drawing in that big amount of people. It's now being transferred to Jesus. Um, his disciples, John the Baptist's disciples, were alarmed and could not see the true meaning behind what was taking place in the spiritual realm they thought of the attention and fame and not what Jesus, who was obviously the Messiah, was there to do the will of God. They only saw a conflict instead of the miracle getting ready to take place. So in them saying he is baptizing all are going to him, they're kind of like, oh my God, you know, he's taking all of our people. People are no longer going to come to us. We're basically going to run out of people to baptize. We're basically going to be, you know, long gone, um, forgotten. Or whatever the case may be they were looking at it from a more fleshly point of view a carnal state of mind when at this point they really should have been thinking about it spiritually because spiritually that was the whole point if they understood the point and the purpose that john the baptist had um and what his role was regarding the messiah it would not have been a problem but because they were so carnal minded they did not understand that they did not see that so i thought that was like really profound just to see how um you know, the closest people, the people that follow you, your disciples, who are supposed to know your purpose, are now kind of like trying to hinder your purpose by making you feel like jealous or upset about something that is supposed to happen, if that makes sense. Like, John understood his purpose. He knew what he was sent to do. He knew what he had to do. But now you got his disciples coming to tell them, like, they're kind of like snitching in a sense, if you will, using um, modern day language, um, telling him, you know, now we don't we don't have all the people. Jesus got all the people, and it's the same person that you baptized. You baptized him, 
and you were supposed to set the way for him, but now he's stealing all of your people kind of stuff. So, um, his disciples, let me make sure this is in frame because I have my notes halfway over the screen. Yes, okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. And, um, so John's disciples. Or carnal minded. Not looking at the miracle. Getting ready to take place. And this is kind of the same thing Jesus had to deal with with his own own disciples at one point. Um, they didn't want him to fulfill his purpose. They felt like he should have stayed where he was. But that was not who Jesus was and that's not who John was. So color because we know I need color in my life. And again, I'm using the uh, Zebra Mild Liners at this point in time. And just so you guys can see, um, there is show through, but there's no bleeding. There's only bleeding when you like keep it at a specific point for too long, but even then the bleeding is not that bad. And the same thing with the brown. The brown is right here on this side. Um, you really cannot see it here. Sorry. You really cannot see it too well. Like too bad here so I really like the zebra mount liners a lot in this Bible um, you can get these in a 15 pack um, collectively in a 15 pack at Target for I think 16 bucks I got mines in a three set individually um, because there are this is basically three these are like three different sets they have the neon the warm and the cool there is a fourth pack out um, that you can also find. So you can find them anywhere, basically now. <laughs> but they are a Japanese kind of brand, if you will. So let's use this lovely green that I love a lot. I just love this green. It kind of reminds me of like a pretty version of Army Fatigue green. Don't know why. keeping track of the time because my camera will shut off for about 45 minutes in and then I'll have to restart it. Um, but moving on to verse 27, John answered, a person cannot receive any one thing unless it is given him from heaven. And I'm going to underline that whole quote. Okay. And basically John the Baptist understands that everything he had came from God whatever you receive is given from the Father in some form or fashion so John understood this he, he he knew that you know he had this ministry and this ministry was not because of him this was given to him for a specific person not person <laughs> for a specific purpose so he understood that this ministry was God's ministry and it was to fulfill the purpose that God had set for him and once he fulfilled that he understood that he could do nothing but accept the fact that it was now fading out. Um, and this basically emphasizes God's sovereign authority. So, John understood that his ministry. This emphasizes God's sovereign authority. 
my handwriting will turn into chicken scratch soon. <laughs> like, I really like this pen. I just wish the tip wasn't uh, kind of like circular. It's, it's like a squirt. A, a, a squawoo, a, a squirkle, I don't even know. It's like a square circle type of thing. Um, I wish it was kind of like a bullet point, but it is a good pen. And just connect my notes there. What color do I want to use? Let's use this periwinkle kind of cornflower, I guess. Look. Alright. Moving on to 28. He says, You yourself bear me witness. Which I'm underlining. And he says, I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. Okay, so let's get color going quickly. Um, let's use this kind of vermilion kind of color. And then this golden yellow. And I'm going to write my notes on this paper. So I'm going to move my definitions out the way quickly. So writing more notes on the paper, not the paper. I should have made me a cup of coffee before doing this, but whatever. Um, this is verse 28. Alright. Verse 28. So he says, you yourselves bear me witness. Bicycle. Let me fix this because I can't see my notes that well on this. Alrighty then. Okay, so basically, um, there is evidence before them that, you know, John the Baptist is just an ordinary man. He only baptizes with water to prepare the hearts of people. And he makes a call for repentance but never offers true change because he does not have the Holy Spirit like Jesus does. So, there is evidence of John being an ordinary man. He calls to repentance But can offer I'm gonna say salvation. No salvation. There we go. Alright. Then he says, I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. This is actually a cross reference to what he said back in chapter one. Um in chapter one. If I can find it in all my notes. This is back in chapter 1, verse 20. Um, I'm going to start at verse 19. So chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. And this is when um, the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and he did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. Um, and they kept asking him who he was. And then verse 23, he said, I am the voice of one carrying out the wilderness out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. So, um, yeah, I'm just making sure that was all that I had to say. Yeah, so, I'm going to just write that note back here as well. I was going to write it on the actual Bible page, but, um, this is a reference to John 1, 19, 20, 23, I think I said. 
or was it 24? 23, yeah. Um, and John then reminded his disciples that he knew who he was, he also knew who Jesus was, understanding that he could keep his proper place, not too high thinking he was the Christ, but not too low thinking that he had no call or no plan, um, no place in God's plan. So, basically I'm going to write John was secure in who he was. and his purpose. Alright, moving on to 29. 29. The one who has the bride is the bridegroom. So, that's the first thing I'm going to underline. The one who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Is I'm basically underlining the whole thing but in three parts. So each sentence has its own underline if that makes sense. Okay. And I'm just gonna underline verse thirty as well. He must increase, but I must decrease. So verse twenty Nine. My camera's gonna shut off soon, so I just have to pay attention to it. Okay. First, let's get some color. Let's get some color in here. Oh, um, use this red. Yeah, yeah. And then we're gonna take some purple. Okay, okay, and then I'm going to take this baby blue, and then we're going to hit them, we're going to hit it with this, ooh, okay, <laughs> this yellow, <laughs> that was so weird, I'm going to just, yeah, that's, it. that's how we're doing it, okay. I like to have my colors set in stone so I know what I'm doing. Alright. So I can talk about this quickly before it cuts off. So, the one who has a bride is the bridegroom. All that I'm going to say is that the bride would represent the people who are basically us. And the bridegroom would be Jesus. Simple as that. So, the bride equals people us in parentheses I said bridge Lord Jesus <laughs> bridegroom equals Jesus that's pretty much all that I put for that first part I just wanted to reiterate that for myself as I was reading and I felt like it was like profound but not like profound Alright, moving on, it then says, the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bride's room, bridegroom's voice. So, John basically considers himself the best man who stands by the groom, excited about the unity to come. Simply put, John is excited about the marriage that's getting ready to take place between Jesus and the people. He's excited that now, you know, he made his entry to prepare the way for the groom to come into take hold and marry the bride. Hopefully that just made sense. Um, it made sense as I was saying it, so. John excited about the unity to come between Jesus and the people. Alright, and then the last part. It 
in which he says, Therefore this joy of mine is not complete. John wanted his followers to know that all these um, arrangements fulfilled his joy. All that he had was now handed over to Jesus, which means he fulfills his purpose. In that. Yeah, which means he fulfilled the purpose that God created him for. So basically, he's full of joy and peace because now he's fulfilled the purpose that he was created for. He fulfilled his duty and he can now see the Messiah do what it is that God sent the Messiah to do. I mean, why wouldn't you be joyful? So, John, I'm going to quickly read this before the camera cuts off. John filled with joy because his purpose is fulfilled. He completed the task God gave him. So that's why he is so filled with joy. So I'm actually going to cut the camera off so it doesn't just cut off in the middle of me talking and restart it. Okay, guys. So I restarted it. Like I said, I didn't want it to cut off in the middle of me talking because it will only record about 45 to 47 minutes of me um, talking so I just cut it off and I also zoomed in a bit. Hopefully this is good. This is about a 2.1 zoom in. So let me know if this works for you guys. Um, so yeah, we left off. Uh, we finished with verse 29. So now we're at verse 30, which says, He must increase, but I must decrease. And we did define both increase and decrease. So increase here means to become greater, to grow or enlarge, and decrease means to become less, lower, or inferior. So in a sense, he is saying that Jesus has to become greater. He must enlarge his ministry, and I myself must become lower. I have to become less. My ministry has to become inferior to that of Jesus's. And I said God when I meant to say Jesus, guys. But basically, John the Baptist understood it was good for him to become less visible and known because that meant that Jesus was becoming more visible and known. Jesus should be more in us than we are within ourselves. And his desires, will, and plan should be more than our own. That's basically what I got. And like I said, that's like a key verse for me. It's a verse that I really love. And you know what? I'm going to highlight it because I just love this verse so much. It's like my favorite verse from John. Bam. Highlighting. And just so you guys can see again, only only um, show through the bleed through. Bleed through is only like here on the parts where you're holding your pen or the highlighter for too long. Um, but that's just inevitable, clearly. But um, okay. John knew he had to become. Less so that Jesus could become. Oh, Jesus, I just got real hot, guys. Oh, God. Okay, hold on. You might hear my mic moving a bit. But I'm extremely hot. I can put it back on. Okay, hopefully that's better. But I had to take off my robe. I just got really, really hot. But John knew he had to become less so that Jesus could become more. John's ministry fades. Jesus's ministry and this is chicken scratch right now so whatever enlarges <laughs> so I'll read it because that was complete chicken scratch just now but John knew he had to become less 
so that Jesus could become more. John John's ministry fades. Jesus's ministry enlarges. That's what it's supposed to read, but it looks like chicken scratch. So. Moving on to verse 31. We are almost done, guys. We are almost done. Okay. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth belongs to the earth and speaks in an earthly way. He who comes from heaven is above all. So that's verse 31, and I'm actually going to continue um, underlining. No, I'm not. <laughs> Thought about it. I was. No, I'm not. I'm not going to do it. Okay, so. Thirty one. I'm going to put these over here. Hope you guys can see this okay. Not that well. So I'm just going to scooch just a bit up. thought my son was waking up. I was about to cry. Okay. about the noise putting everything back in the pencil cup but uh, okay verse 31 he who comes from above is above all basically John the Baptist declares that Jesus though born by flesh is still from heaven which means he is man he is the son of God and he is himself God so I think this is that blue color. Yes. Okay. Then it says, He who is of the earth belongs to the earth and speaks in an earthly way. So we, being born in a world of sin, can only speak the things of the world. Unlike us, Jesus speaks heavenly, but we need the Holy Spirit in order to speak heavenly things. So... We are born in a world of sin. So cannot speak heavenly. Without help of the Holy Spirit. 
Jesus only speaks of heavenly things. That was terrible. <laughs> and the last part of verse 31. Um, he who comes from heaven is above all. Jesus is greater than all. His origin is heavenly. Simple as put. Simply put, I mean. Okay. Done with verse 31. Jumping into verse 32 now. He bears witness to what he has seen and heard. Yet no one receives his testimony. I'm going to take this orange. I really like how neon that orange is. Like that orange is like booyah in your face. Going back with this nasty brown. So verse 32. He bears witness to what he has seen and heard. Jesus only speaks of the things he knows and has experienced firsthand. And all of that that he's experienced and all the things that he's heard is basic truth. So, Jesus Verse 32, yet no one receives his testimony. John the Baptist prophetically anticipated the rejection of Jesus. Um, sorry, he prophetically anticipated the rejection, rejection Jesus would endure in his ministry. He came from heaven, testified to the truth, but rel relatively no one received his testimony, even though witnesses certified it as the truth of God. I hope that just made sense. <laughs> so... John prophetically anticipates anticipated the rejection Jesus would endure in his ministry all right moving to verse three i mean thirty three <laughs> Whoever receives his testimony sets his seal to this, that God is true. I'm going to take this pink highlighters. Basically, the testimony of Christ always agrees with God. It's truth rendering truth. The testimony of Christ.
always agrees with God. Let me just check the battery on this baby. We're good, but let me just charge her back up quickly. Okay. It's insane that I really used two pieces of paper to take notes. So that's verse 33, and then moving on to 34, which my notes for 34 will be on this sheet. All the, the last couple of verses will be notes over here, because I'm going to save this space for the verse on chapter 4. So now we're on verse 34. For he whom God has sent utters the words of God. So he whom God has sent utters the words of God. He gives spirits. He gives the spirit without measure. So. Yeah, let me just continue. Um, then going to 35. The father loves the son. Has given all things into his hand. Whoever believes in the son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the son will not see life. But the wrath of God remains on him. Alright. Now that we have all that down, let's give it all some color. I'll put the gray here. Brown again. Okay. So we got the color down, right? So, 34. He whom God has sent utters the words of God. Jesus is uniquely reliable revelation because he has the Holy Spirit without measure in contrast to the previous prophets. Jesus is uniquely Reliable revelation. Because unlike prophets and etc., which were like the kings, the judges, and people like that. 
he has the spirits without measure and obviously in the next part of that verse it says he gives the spirit without measure so basically it's saying that God gives Jesus the spirit without measure so basically John spoke of Jesus who had the Holy Spirit without measure which was basically it was unlimited but um, this was prophetically of the New Testament, which featured a true outpouring of the Holy Spirit. For those who joined to the Messiah through the New Covenant, there was um, as much of the Spirit needed given without measure. So basically, we have an unlimited access to the Holy Spirit. We just have to access it. Um, we have the privilege to have an outpour of it. It's an unlimited source that we can receive. But in order to receive it, you obviously have to believe in Jesus. You have to have faith. And um, you have to know how to utilize those keys that God and Jesus left behind for us. So, um, Jesus basically experienced the Holy Spirit in an unlimited manner. And I do have cross-references. So, Jesus experienced... Holy Spirit in unlimited ways. Unlimited way. So I have Isaiah 11 and 2 as a cross reference. Isaiah 42 and 1. And then Isaiah 61 and 1. So, going to those cross-references... Again, just using the Holy Bible app from you version. Look at that, I'm already in Isaiah, haha. <laughs> so let's go back to 11 and 2. And it reads, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. So that's the first one. Then we have 42 and 1. Behold my servant whom I uphold my chosen and whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. And lastly, 61. And one, the spirit of the Lord, I'm sorry, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. All right, moving on to 35. It reads, the father loves the son. Simple, right? Okay. God loves his son more than anything in the world. I mean, there's nothing else to say. God loves his son. The 
there's Matthew 317 Mark 111 and Luke Okay. So I'm going to flip to Matthews 3.17. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Going to Mark 1.11. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. And I believe Luke 3.22 says the same. 3.22, right? And the Holy Spirit descended on him in a bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. So, that's that. And the last part of verse 35 says, Has given all things into his hand. Christ is, a, is supreme because God sovereignly granted that status to him. So, Christ is supreme because God... And we're down to the last verse, 36. Thirty-six says, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. So having faith, confidence, and trust in Jesus shows that we love God, and in doing so, He gives us eternal life an invitation to faith basically so an invitation to faith So, an invitation to faith, having faith, confidence, and trust in Jesus shows we love God. And in doing so, He gives us eternal life. See verse 15 in parentheses because that's when I talked about the um, whole eternal life kind of thing. So verse 36 again. And this part says, whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life. So, to reject is to reject his gift, which is eternal life. To reject his Son... To reject his Son... And to refuse to 
submit to his authority. is to reject God's gift of eternal life. And here we are for the last part of verse 36. Which reads, but the wrath of God remains on him. So, the wrath of God, okay, the word wrath does not mean like a sudden gust of passion or a burst of temper. Rather, it is the settled displeasure of God against sin. It is the divine allergy to moral evil, the reaction of righteousness to unrighteousness, sin's evil abides until the wrong of it is perfectly satisfied. It abides into the next world because those who reject Jesus cannot offer a perfect sacrifice acceptable to God. The wrath of God abides until the perfect payment Jesus made on the cross satisfies the depth of evil and guilt. Um, and this is also basically the wrath that will remain with you is the consequence of your failure to believe. So. I know that was a lot that I just said, so I'm going to shorten it down to say consequence of failure to believe as part of it, and um, wrath settled. His pleasure of God against sin. It abides until perfect payment is made but Jesus is sacrifice on the cross is the only perfect payment okay so basically it's the consequence um, for failure to believe wrath is the subtle displeasure of God against sin and it abides until a perfect payment is made um, but Jesus' sacrifice on the cross is the only perfect payment, so therefore, obviously, that wrath would just stick with you. Um, so that's pretty much it, as far as the notes. But um, to end, I'm just going to basically say a few things. So chapter 3 is kind of like a two-part with many parts to it. It basically first opens up with Nicodemus and Jesus having a private conversation in which Jesus tells of how man must be reborn by the way of the spirit in order to see the kingdom of God. Jesus clearly offers salvation to Nicodemus in their conversation. And then the second half is John the Baptist's final testimony before his ministry fades away and Jesus' ministry moves to the forefront. He ends off with a call to faith completing his purpose as the witness of Christ to the people. And we see Jesus in three different roles within this chapter. We see him as a teacher when he was speaking to Nicodemus. We see him as the bridegroom towards the middle of John the Baptist's final testimony. And then we see him also as the witness. Um, there are also seven wonders in John 3.16. So the first one is God, who is the almighty authority. 
Then, So Love the World, this is the mightiest motive that he gave his only begotten son, which was the greatest gift. That whoever, which is the widest welcome, believes in him, which is the easiest escape, should not perish, which is the divine deliverance, but have everlasting life, which is the priceless possession. So that verse has seven wonders. And then we can also see Christ's superiority to man in the last paragraph of um, John chapter 3, which is here in verses 31 to 35. Yes, <clears throat> sorry for my voice. <clears throat> okay, so we have Christ who has... Um, okay, so these are the basic the reasons why he's more superior to man. Christ has a heavenly origin, which we can see in verse 31, which says, He who comes from above is above all. He comes from heaven is above all. I'm making sure this is in frame. Um, and then in verse 32, we know that Christ knows the truth from first-hand experience. In verse 33, we see that uh, Christ's testimony always agrees with God. In verse 34, we see that Christ experiences the Holy Spirit in an unlimited manner. And then in verse 35, we see that Christ was made supreme by the Father. So that's why he is more superior to us. And, um, yeah, that is pretty much it. Um, as far as, like, the seven wonders that I mentioned and the reasons why he was superior, I have those on the printable. But... Finally done with chapter 3. I'm so excited. Let me zoom out quickly. Just a little bit. <laughs> and, um, yeah. So, we started here. We have this bottom portion with the sticky note for notes. This whole page here. Get it in the frame. This whole page, these sticky notes, and the back as well as notes here. What I am going to do is block off this part here so that I know when I start um, the notes here will be for chapter 4. But yeah, we're done. I'm excited. I can't wait to dive into chapter 4. I'm going to work on that within the next few days. Um, and my goal in that video is going to be to get through verse 1 through um, 26. Fingers crossed. Is cross. Um, it'll probably end up being a three part video as well because there are 54 chapters, 54 chapters, 54 verses. So the first video will probably just be like this chunk here, these three paragraphs, and then the second video will be, will be these three paragraphs, and then the final video will just be this paragraph here. Um, but yeah, I am finished with chapter three. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, leave them down below in the comment section. DM me on Instagram, Facebook, message me, email me if you need to. Again, the notes for the print the printable notes are in the Facebook group um, and also on the Google Drive for Daughter of Increase. So you can check those out by clicking the links down below. And that's it for this video. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.